One of the most powerful features of Spreadsheet.com is that it allows you to connect worksheets like tables in a relational database so that rows become linked together like records. This allows you to build some pretty powerful things in Spreadsheet.com with just a few clicks. For example, here we have an asset management workbook with two worksheets called assets and vendors that are linked together. Each of the rows in our assets worksheet was purchased from a vendor, and each vendor is a row in our vendors worksheet. So here, column G in our assets worksheet contains links to rows in the vendors worksheet. You can click on a row link to open that row in a form dialog. This allows you to view and even edit all the information in that row, even though it lives in a different worksheet. For example, here we're looking at a row from the vendors worksheet without actually leaving the assets worksheet. This is all accomplished by simply using the related row data type. And you'll notice here in column G, we've set this column to contain links to rows in the vendors worksheet in the same asset management workbook. You can also open any row in the current worksheet by clicking the expand icon in the row header at the left. You can then drill down to related rows, and you can just keep going. Because Spreadsheet.com is both a spreadsheet and relational database, there is no end to the number of worksheets and rows you can link together. So we've just shown a simple example where rows are linked between two worksheets in the same workbook, but Spreadsheet.com lets you link worksheets together across entirely different spreadsheets, even those in different folders. So now, we'll walk through an example of how easy this is to do. So let's say in practice, each of our assets is in use by an employee, but all of our employee data exists in a different workbook called Employee Directory, which lives in our HR folder. Rather than duplicate that data, it would be much better to link to it so we maintain a single source of truth for our employee data. So we can do this simply by inserting a column or changing column H to the related row data type. And let's call this employees because we're going to link to rows in the employees worksheet of our employee directory workbook. And now we navigate to the HR folder, open our employee directory workbook and select the employees worksheet. We also uncheck the allow linking to multiple rows checkbox because we want to make sure only one employee can be assigned to an asset at any given time. And now we can assign employees to assets. Once a link is established, we can see the employee's details by clicking on the row link and then drilling down to anything else related to that employee. For example, the location where she works. You'll notice at the top of the row details dialog, it shows you where the row lives. If it lives in a different workbook, you can just click on the link to open that workbook and view the whole worksheet. And here you'll notice in this example that Spreadsheet.com automatically added an assets column to the employee's worksheet because the relationship is two-sided, just like a relational database by default. Now let's say you want to see more than just the name of linked employees in the assets worksheet, like maybe a photo and email address. Again, instead of duplicating that information, it's much better to link to it. And now that a relationship between the assets worksheet and employee worksheet exists, you can easily pull related information into the assets worksheet using the related row lookup data type. So in our example, let's change column I to use the related row lookup data type. And now you'll see you can pick columns to look up based on existing relationships in the worksheet. So here we'll select email to pull in the employee's email address and name the column email. And now you can see all the email addresses automatically populate. And this happens now automatically whenever you link another row.